Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of this journey the next couple of weeks. We're talking about the 12 Jungian archetypes, and I'm throwing a Christian twist on it. Not even a twist. It's really kind of the way it should be. Um, Carl Jung was not necessarily a devout Christian. In fact, I believe he was an atheist. Um, but the whole point of this is to identify what your archetype is or how they might blend with other uh, archetypes and really to um, see if you can shrink yourself, make yourself better, be the best you possibly can be. That's what we're going to get into today. Today, we're going to talk about the jester. We're just going to keep going down the list. Last week, we talked about the caregiver. Today, we're going to talk about the jester. Maybe you're the, the class clown. Maybe this is you. We'll get into it. We'll see. Um, thank you very much again for being here from the bottom of my heart. Uh, please continue to pray for Western North Carolina and add Florida to your prayers. Uh, they got blasted. Uh, if you're watching this Friday, it was two days ago. Um, but they are a little bit more prepared for hurricane response in Florida than they are in Western North Carolina. I'm not saying which one is going to be worse, but um, it doesn't matter. They're all God's people. Let's pray for them. Hopefully everybody gets back to uh, a sense of normalcy sooner rather than later. Um, Check us out on the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. I throw a blog up every Monday. Uh, you'll find links to the YouTube channels, both the uh, Three Pillars Podcast YouTube channel, as well as my personal uh, kind of fitness and motivation channel. You'll see that there. And all things Three Pillars, you can find it there. Contact this page. If you got anything, questions, drop me a comment, shoot me an email, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Whatever, I'm there. We're, we got all that knocked out. Also, go over to Good Pods. Check the create account on Good Pods. Links down below. Uh, follow the show. Like it. Comment as you tune in and listen to the show on Good Pods. You can leave a little comment. Sense, and I can go back and look at it and respond to them there. It's another really cool app. Helps uh, little guys like me get discovered. So thank you for doing that. Um, share the show. That's how we grow. We're going to start with a quick word of prayer as always. And then dive right into the jester archetype. And then kick you guys out for a good week. And how's that sound? Pretty good. All right, let us pray. Father God, we know we're a little bit of clowns sometimes, and sometimes we use humor to either satire or make fun of or just make light of situations. Lord, help us to hone this gift if we are comedians. Show us how we can use that to serve and honor you. Because we all have our different talents, Lord. We all can't be the same. So whatever we can use to glorify you, help us to do that. Help us to uh, recognize and identify the shadow in all of us, but to keep that at bay and to prevent that from uh, taking over. Lord, please be with the people of Western North Carolina, the, those Appalachian strong folk, Eastern Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, and then now Florida. All your people, Lord, have been affected greatly over the past two weeks. And we ask that you just help them again to find peace amongst the storm and to find you throughout. Lord, I ask that you be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that can grow them closer to you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. All right. The jester. I know one or more of you guys out there identify with the jester. Mike Mercado, looking at you, son. Uh, he specifically told me, he said, yeah, I'm definitely the jester archetype. Because he looked it up, uh, kind of got ahead. You're, you're jumping ahead, bud, but it's all right. Um, I'm glad you're doing well because of, of the storm. You you make me proud that you weathered all that. So he's down in Florida for you guys not tracking. We're going to talk about the jester. Again, one of the 12 archetypes, Carl Jung. He embodies humor, spontaneity, and creativity. That's kind of the um, some of the characteristics, as it were. Again, getting back to Carl Jung's collective unconscious theory, this is really a facet of the human psyche that seeks to bring joy, provoke thought, and also challenge kind of conventional norms, if you will. Through play playfulness, jest, and often irreverent humor, the jester pro uh, reveals profound truths in our lives. Unlike the other archetypes that might focus on power, wisdom, or nurturing, the jester's primary aim is to lighten situations, uncover hidden absurdities, and remind us all not to take life too seriously. So your comic relief, if you will, but in a more, it's, it's deeper than that, and we're going to get into it. So again, we're going to talk about the characteristics, the motivations, and developmental pathways of the jester archetype. 
the primary components being empathy, skills, independence, wisdom, and an overwhelming orientation towards creativity. We're going to talk about the shadow of the jester, and we're going to also talk about how it overlaps with other archetypes, kind of like we did um, in the other episode. And we're also going to talk about how to embody this archetype, strengthen the archetype through your faith and physical fitness. All right? Because this is kind of a spiritual, mental, physical show. That's what we're going to talk about. So, what are the characteristics of the jester archetype? At the core of the jester archetype is the drive to live in the moment and find joy in everyday life. This archetype thrives on creativity, using humor and wit as tools to challenge societal norms and encourages individuals to break free from restrictive mentalities. The jester doesn't adhere to the rigid rules that govern, govern these other archetypes. Instead, the jester relishes in breaking them, often highlighting the absurdity of the rules in the process. Creativity is our first characteristic. It's the jester's most dominant trait. This archetype is not bound by tradition or convention, allowing for the free flow of ideas, innovation, and alternative perspectives. The jester is not merely a comedian. He's often an artist, a writer, a performer, or a thinker who uses unconventional methods to express himself. His creativity is not purely for entertainment, but often serves to provoke thought, inspire others, and challenge authority or outdated thinking. When I was in the Marine Corps, there was always that kind of real funny guy. And sometimes when you get a problem and you're trying to go by these just conventional rules, he might say, he, he, there's always one. It's going to, hey, what if we do it this way? It'd be fun. And you do it that way. It might be a little bit more efficient. But it might make some people mad, but you get it, you get it done anyways, right? It's like, the, it's like the Marines using the cardboard boxes to fake out the AI. I don't know if you guys remember that story. Leave it to the Marines to find a real simple and funny way to trick, you know, sophisticated technology. That's a good example right there. Joke, no, the jesters, the jokers. Ha, classic example of the jester. Somebody like the medieval court jester, obviously, who, despite their lowly position, were often the only ones allowed to speak truth to the king. But generally, it's in a kind of a cloaked manner, using humor. Their playful manner could mask deeper critiques, and it's, that's the hallmark of the archetype strategy uh, and the strategic use of creativity. A second characteristic is empathy. While the jester may appear frivolous or detached, his ability to understand human nature is the is key to his role. With empathy, the jester has enough sensitivity to the emotions of others to know when his humor will uplift or hurt. You know how to read the room, right? This trait ensures that while the jester may challenge authority or poke fun in a serious matter, he does so in a way that fosters understanding rather than division, unless you get into the shadow. Known for the spontaneity, the jester also possesses, possesses a significant skill set. That's the next part is skills. Whether it's through performance, storytelling, or humor, the jester hones his craft to be effective in communicating his message. Using skills, it's going to help reflect the deliberate effort and talent the jester uses to fine-tune creative outputs. And then make sure that these outputs resonate with the audience. If you're thinking again, a comedian, a performer, an actor, or anything like that, honing those skills to really uh, strike a chord with the audience. Sometimes you got to strike, strike the one that's uncomfortable, but it gets you out of your comfort zone and helps you think outside the box a little bit. Jesters are good at that. Independence. While the jester is deeply, uh, while the jester is deeply social and often thrives in group settings, there's a significant independence streak within it. This independence reflects the need to detach from societal norms and expectations. Humor and wit often rely on the ability to view from a different, more detached perspective, free from constraints that bind others. And you tie this into the final trait of wisdom. While it's not a huge portion of the jester's core makeup, they give it, they give these guys kind of ratings, right? Um, with the creativity being 63%, empathy, 8%, skills, 13, independence, 11, and wisdom is only at 10%. It's a pivotal role using wisdom. Wisdom is not that of the sage or the mentor archetype, but rather the kind of wisdom that recognizes life's absurdities and uses them to challenge assumptions, kind of being street smart versus book smart, right? At, the, at his best, the jester uses humor to reveal profound truths and encourage others to just take a step back and reevaluate your own beliefs and behaviors. Maybe you're still on the right track, but you need to really take a step back and have some self-reflection to figure out, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? And maybe that's what the gestures do, just to get you thinking, make sure that if you are going to defend your position, you can do it from whatever angle is thrown at you, even if it's something more unconventional. Okay, so good on you, gestures, for getting us outside the box. I wouldn't consider myself a jester. Um, I think I'm funny at times, but the prevailing trait is not uh, uh, 
humor and, and, and creativity, as it were. Uh, but if it is for you guys, embrace it. So we talked about the jester, what it is. Let's talk about the shadow of the jester. Again, each one of these archetypes has a shadow. And that shadow is a darker, unconscious aspect that manifests when the, uh, the archetype is unbalanced or out of whack. Okay. The shadow emerges in the jester when the humor becomes reckless, malicious, or when the desire for amusement overrides your real responsibilities. How can it manifest? Several ways. The main three, though, cynicism and mockery is the first one. Instead of using humor to uplift or provoke thought, the jester can become cynical and uses his wit to mock or to belittle others. This shadow aspect turns the jester's creative energy into a weapon, often alienating those around him. Second one is avoidance of seriousness. The jester's focus on living in the moment can lead to an avoidance of deeper, more serious issues. When taken too far, the jester may refuse to engage with important matters, dismiss dismissing them as too heavy or boring. This can prevent personal growth and lead to superficial relationships or lack of purpose. I'm just going to ignore the stuff that's serious in life and just try to trot along and not actually take some, anything seriously because it really doesn't affect me now. But maybe it affects you later on. It's like not getting involved in politics because you don't understand it or not getting involved with um, your finances or physics, whatever it might be. You, you don't take the serious things. You know, I got a I got a leak in my pipe. I'm just going to let it run. It's not, not that not that bad. When in fact, it could be really, really bad if you don't address it. Now, uh, any other issues, you can you can replace the blank with that. The last one is self-sabotage. The jester's desire for freedom and creativity can sometimes lead him to sabotage his own success. By treating everything as a joke, a jester may miss opportunities to connect with other people or to really succeed and grow because you don't, again, don't take those things seriously. You're going to, if you're always looking to, to make a joke and things like that, instead of channeling that creativity into something productive, like maybe you can blow up on TikTok. Maybe you can uh, get big on the Instagram, or maybe you can, you know, whatever profession that you're in, you can use your creativity to drive a company for it or drive an entrepreneurial spirit or something like that. But if you're, everything's always a joke, you don't take it seriously. Oh man, you know, I just, you missed out on a whole bunch of money because I d decided that instead of going to work at this job because it's going to pay me a lot more and it's uh, too much work for me, I'd rather just you know go over here and make jokes all the time. Maybe that was the, the, the next step. You just missed that opportunity because you just decided not to uh, embrace a role or change your archetype or uh, take on aspects of another one, which leads us into our next point. How does the jester, can it overlap with other archetypes? The jester does, in fact, share certain traits with other archetypes, most specifically or particularly the magician and the lover. So the jester and the magician, how does that kind of interrelate? The magician archetype is also highly creative and innovative, just like the jester. Both archetypes have a penchant for seeking beyond surface realities and tapping into deeper truths. While the magician seeks to transform reality through knowledge and mastery of secret forces, or just knowledge as it were, the jester reveals those truths through humor and playfulness. Both of these archetypes challenge societal norms, but where the magician often works behind the scenes, the jester does it in the open using wit to expose his hidden realities. So you can sort of take a little bit of both. Maybe you need to move more from your kind of jovialness and do stuff more behind the scenes, not because a lot of times if you're that jester, you want to be front and center. Everybody see you and see all these things. But maybe you need to take a step back and work behind the scenes and lift somebody else up using your uh, skills and creativity. Just something to think about. How about the jester and the lover? The lover, driven by passion and emotion, shares the jester's love of life and ability to live in the moment. The lover seeks beauty and connection, often in the form of sensual pleasures or deep emotional experiences. But the lover might seek these through relationships and aesthetic experiences. The, the jester finds joy and beauty in the act of creation and humor, putting on a performance, putting on a show, writing something out, writing a book, making a skit, whatever it might be. Both archetypes prioritize the present moment and experience and experience joy in the simple pleasures of life. But it, maybe it's through a different medium. Uh, it, maybe it is art. Maybe it's a connection to others or laughter. They can kind of both play in both of those realms. Can you change? Can you be fluid in your archetype? Sure, we talked about that at the beginning, but this is kind of how you can see how maybe you can take aspects from all these things and make your own kind of hybrid force, the the lover jester, the, the magical jester, or whatever we want to call it. Think about that. Mike, I know you're going to listen to this. Let me know what you think about it.
All right. So how do we optimize our life in this Jesser archetype through a Christian faith? And then add in some physical fitness too, because that's something I think that's important uh, because this is the Three Pillars podcast. Hello. For a man who identifies with the Jesser archetype, balancing natural creativity and humor with structure and purpose and faith will help you thrive. Christianity, as well as physical fitness, provide these frameworks, the discipline, uh, some structure. Adding a little structure is not good. It's being so rigid that you're inflexible is not good. But being flexible, being uh, able to channel your energy constructively fosters both personal and spiritual growth. It's like putting on, you know, if you've got a a um, a hose that is just going all over the place, but you need, really need to focus it down, you, or uh, you, you, you change the setting on your hose, right, to make it more focused. You put up guardrails to keep you going in the same direction so you don't go off the rails. You it, These rules and discipline will help you focus your energy and your efforts. Some of the best stand-up comedians out there have focus. Look at the Rogans. Look at the Sam Tripleys. Look at the uh, the the Carlins, the uh, the Eddie Murphys. All these name name a comedian. They have usually found some kind of focus or some kind of niche. He, I would say most of them identify as a jester at some point at some port, portion of their lives, but they have found some way to focus it. That way, they become these kind of mega stars, right? Put that in, into your pipe and smoke it, as they say. So while the jester may seem irreverent. His joy and creativity can be deeply aligned with Christian teachings. In Christianity, joy is considered the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. And the Bible encourages believers to rejoice in the Lord, Philippians 4.4. The jester's natural tendency to spread joy can be seen as a gift when aligned. One of the risks for the jester is falling into pride or cynicism. Christianity's focus and emphasis on humility can counterbalance this. By remembering that his creative and humor are gifts from God, the jester can stay grounded and use his talents to uplift others rather than to tear them down. Use it in service to others. Be humble, but still bring joy. Segways into service to others. Christianity teaches that life is not just about self-indulgence, but serving others. Mark 4, I'm sorry, Mark 10, 45. The jester's creativity and humor can be powerful tools for spreading love and encouragement. By focusing on how the talents can benefit others, the jester can align his life with Christian values. The jester often focuses on the lighter side of life, but Christianity acknowledges that life also involves suffering. By turning to Christian teachers, the jester can find meaning in difficult times without falling into a shadow tendency of avoiding seriousness or becoming cynical. How many veterans that are out there have been through some dark stuff, but find light through humor? Okay, and, and I'm not going to get into that too much because not everybody's a veteran listening to this. But sometimes you got to crack a joke, even in when times are absolutely miserable. And even though you're suffering, you're going through it. Find a little hope with a little humor. Know that God's got you through all the storms that are going on down there. I bet people are telling, telling jokes right now. And the memes are flying, uh, despite the, the the chaos going on in the world, especially in Florida and North Carolina right now. Find the hope in suffering. Okay. That's how you can utilize your humor for good. Use your powers for good. That's what I want to get out of all these these archetypes. Use your powers for good. So how can physical fitness help you? It's just another outlet for your creative energy, okay? Structure, discipline, and challenges that come with maintaining a fit body can help balance your spontaneous and often chaotic nature so you don't slip into the shadow of chaos. When you channel your energy, again, you're naturally going to be spontaneous and naturally going to be energetic as a jester. Awesome. Physical activity, whether through sports, dancing, fitness routines, whatever. If it's going to give you a way to, again, focus your energy into something constructive. And also it's that natural outlet to help you stay grounded in your body. Focus your thoughts, clear your mind, give you a solid um, kind of reprieve and a refresh. If you do it every day, you get your creative juices flowing by doing some kind of physical activity. That's really going to help you get started. I'm not going to keep picking on Mike, but I know Mike has been crushing it at the gym. And he tells me, I feel great. And he has he puts out some really funny stuff on TikTok. I don't have TikTok, but I know he does. And he sends me his videos and they're funny. Good. Use that outlet. Use that creativity. Be the best you can be. Incorporate physical fitness. Optimize yourself. Throw in your faith. Optimize yourself. When you develop discipline, another way physical fitness ties into this archetype. The, the gesture's tendency towards playfulness can sometimes lead to a lack of focus or follow-through. 
Regular physical fitness routines require discipline, which can help the gesture develop a more balanced approach to life. By committing to regular exercise, by putting on a disciplined workout routine, by learning the value of consistency and perseverance, you're going to optimize yourself because now, you know, you might be kind of spontaneous and erratic and out there in the world, but when you get everything moving in the same direction, applying the, the principles of discipline for, with physical fitness into that creative outlet, you will be surprised what you you can build and be better than you were six months ago, okay? And finally, if you want to keep being a jovial, happy-go-lucky, uh, charismatic, whatever kind of person, your mood needs to get boosted. Obviously, through physical fitness, it's, it's very, very well documented that physical fitness has a positive effect on mood. It releases hormones and endorphins that reduce stress and enhances your feelings of happiness. For a man who embodies a gesture archetype, exercise can amplify your natural joy and humor, making it easier for you to stay connected to your positive qualities, again, rather than slipping into those negative attributes and the chaos that is the shadow, okay? Get in the gym, get in a fitness routine. Again, it could be dancing, could be, if you are a jester, you're a, or you're an actor and you are, can sing, you can dance and you can act all at the same time, that takes a lot of work to choreography. Look at Hugh Jackman, for goodness sake. If you ever seen him in like The Greatest Showman or seen him, obviously you know it, most people know him as Wolverine. He's a very, very talented man. I don't know if I would necessarily consider him a jester, but maybe he's a very creative person, but he takes his roles very seriously. He gets jacked for Wolverine. He can sing. He can dance. He was in Les Mis, for goodness sake, okay? That's my, you know, homage to Hugh Jackman. Hats off to him. He's a very, very talented actor because he can do it all. He can sing, act, and dance. Not just a one-trick pony. Good for you, Hugh. If you guys know him, send him this. Tell him I'm giving him kudos, and I appreciate his work. Thank you, Hugh. I still got to see Deadpool and Wolverine. I heard it's really, really good. So and there's your jester archetype right there, Deadpool, in, 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 a, uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Who knows if we were going to get to talk about Deadpool today? It's not even in my notes. I'm going off the rails here. Focus, Tobin. Here we go. To conclude, okay, just to wrap everything up, put a nice little bow on it, recap what we talked about. The jester archetype represents a playful, creative, and spontaneous side of, human, of the human psyche, specifically men. The jester challenges conventions. Brings joy and reveals deeper truths through humor and creativity. Carl Jung, again, this is in his collective unconsciousness uh, uh, theory. While this archetype can slip into cynicism or avoidance when unbalanced, a man can embody the jester archetype. Uh, when you embody the jester archetype, you can optimize it through your faith and your physical fitness. Faith provides a, very, a framework of uh, moral framework that encourages humility, service to others, and joy, even in difficult times. But And physical fitness will, will offer a balance and discipline outlet for the uh, jester's energy and a creativity helping stay grounded and also to uh, continue again to serve others. Through faith, fitness, and a conscious embrace of the positive aspects of the jester archetype, a man can truly cultivate a life full of joy, purpose, and creativity while avoiding the pitfalls of their shadow. Okay? That's the jester, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's all I have for you this week. If you enjoyed this episode, if you identify as the jester, let me know. Connect with the other gestures down in the comments. You guys talk about it. Let me know uh, if, if you find yourself picking from some of these other archetypes and really trying to find your own way. Because again, these are just, maybe these are kind of rigid structures that Young put together, but I think there is a lot more fluidity to it when you can take a little bit, because we're not all the same. You know, there's not just 12 dudes running around out there. There's billions of people out there. If we're going to say there's 50, 50 million, there's like 8 billion dudes on the planet. They're not all into these specific ones. They take the best out of each one and, and apply them to their own lives and their own situations. Okay. This is just something to get to, to wrap your mind around. I've enjoyed uh, going through this. I've enjoyed uh, kind of learning this again with you guys. Um, I hope it's beneficial to you. All right. Make sure you check out, check us out on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Rumble, wherever, leave a comment, subscribe to the show, share it. Um, Sure. And if you can leave a rating and a review, please do the same thing. Every little bit helps. Uh, I would say go ahead and do that right now. All right. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always. My hat's off to you guys. My hat's off. I will tip my little jester hat that I don't have. Uh, to all the jesters out there, thank you for what you do and for being a, a light in people's lives. Uh, God bless you all. So let us pray and we'll kick you guys out for a great week. All right. Father God, thank you so much for giving us humor, for giving us people in this world that despite the craziness and the chaos that can bring light to situations and bring joy to our lives through a joke or a performance or or just being a good friend to uh, to lean on. 
Lord, thank you for being an example for us to follow. Thank you for giving us uh, tools and resources and people in our lives that we can be the best that we truly can be for the service of your kingdom. Lord, I ask you to please continue to uh, give us peace, give us strength throughout all the craziness in the world. Be with the people again of Florida and all, all in the Southeast, Western North Carolina, South Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, Georgia, all the people who have been just put out. Lord, let them see you in the chaos and let your might show and let your light shine through us who do what we can to serve you. Lord, I ask all this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I am Chase Tobin. This is the three pillar. You think I've done this enough. I am Chase Tobin. This is the three pillars podcast. Thank you very much. Until next time, Tobinator out.